I'm going to talk about uh, a recent paper that Darren West and I have on uh, the spectrum policy in India. And the reason we felt that this was a paper that required uh, to be written is because there are very varying different, you know, orthogonal views that are coming out uh, from the industry and from the government on spectrum policy in India. So on one hand, we have a lot of uh, practitioner literature or industry literature which says that spectrum is uh, acutely shortage in India and it is in fact the key concern uh, going forward. While we have announcements from the minister and, and largely from the ministry which says that spectrum shortage is really not a concern at all. So this effort was really meant to reconcile uh, the two views to make sense of this puzzle by looking at the data. Now we don't have uh, you know, data at any firm level. We basically do a meta-analysis uh, comparing India uh, with global standards. And we look at some of the you know, broader parameters to see what exactly is the situation of the sector and what are the broad policy recommendations that are uh, required to be pushed through for healthy growth of the sector, which eventually, of course, benefits the consumers. So we're uniquely, uniquely positioned uh, because our dependence on technology is going to only grow with time. Uh, quite unlike other economies, because in India our growth has been, uh, has been rapid, but it has not been even. So in order to really go ahead and have a more efficient and an inclusive growth, our reliance on technology is going to be significant. And we have seen this happen in the form of uh, recent government announcements, which means, means we want to digitize everything because government services, uh, they have uh, we have announcements of the Jandhan Yojana uh, combined with Aadhaar and mobile phone basically as a way to uh, move ahead with uh, electric, you know, electronic payments and financial inclusion that can get facilitated through uh, technology. We also have smart cities uh, and, and the smartness of the city really rests. Uh, critically on the IT uh, platform. So in all of these large schemes, our dependence on technology, uh, primarily mobile technology, is going to be significant. Now let me start out by pointing out uh, what is so unique about the Indian story. Now spectrum shortage is a concern in all economies. Uh, it is a scarce, it's a valuable uh, resource, but it is also limited. Now, while it doesn't deplete with usage, it, it is definitely limited. So we have concerns of uh, congestion and quality, etc. But uh, the reason Indian uh, story is unique in that uh, sense is because the shortage, while everywhere is, is recognized, it is the data reveals that it is absolutely acute in, in India. And uh, the kind of data we use to elicit this is not just the amount of spectrum available, but also the spectrum capacity in terms of uh, the herds per subscriber because we've seen that the subscriber base has exploded in India over the last 10-15 years uh, because you know access to telephones uh, cheaper devices have, have, have become uh, you know an important facilitating factor now in terms of capacity we know that while India obviously lags beside behind many of the OECD countries we are also uh, China, China, not so much in terms of the current levels of spectrum available we are very comparable with China there, but what is uh, disappointing is, is the pipeline that China has laid out because of the nature of its growth and its ambition is significantly larger. In fact, it's almost 35 times more than the pipeline that India has set forth for the future. Now, uh, if you compare the spectrum capacity with each individual uh, operator, then India really lags. It's one third of Bangladesh. Uh, it, it's it's uh, it's uh, one-tenth of uh, Malaysia. So it, it really stands behind many of its Asian counterparts as well, not just the OECD countries. Now what is, you know, another factor that is unique about the Indian uh, spectrum uh, sector or the Indian telecom sector is it's highly competitive, much more competitive than, you know, nearly all other economies. And how do we say this? Well, if we look at a simple measure of market concentration through the Herfindahl Hirschman index, then we know that the market concentration in India is actually very low. It's, it's uh, equivalent to 0.22, which is probably the lowest in the world. Now, what does it mean? 
Well, when you have very low market concentration, which means high degree of competition, and you have high fixed cost uh, attached to uh, you know, limited available spectrum, jointly they mean that the sector has a growth uh, constraint. There is uh, naturally going to be a constraint to how much the sector can grow. And while um, you know, we have had uh, the benefits of high competition uh, passed down to consumers, which we note in the form of high usage, uh, Indians talk a lot and our usage in terms of uh, minutes per subscriber per month is only second to China. We, we have an average usage of about 365 minutes uh, per month by a subscriber, uh, while China is, is probably 20 minutes more per month. But if you look at the call rates, then India really does have one of the lowest call rates in the world. We barely pay a cent uh, per minute of call time. Now, so these are consumer benefits. This is how we measure consumer surplus typically. But this is a benefit that is only going to remain in the short run, primarily because of the restrictive nature of uh, policy in this space. Uh, we are going to see limitations to this, and eventually in the long run, these benefits are not going to be uh, there. So uh, now typically what happens in uh, sectors, in economies which are free economies, liberal economies, with progressive policies, when you have high degrees of competition and uh, uh, low margins, firms either exit or they consolidate. Now in India that is not possible right now because it is not allowed. So these kind of market corrections that are required for a healthy growth of a sector have to be facilitated. Uh, and, and that's one of the policy recommendations that we'd like to make to the uh, ministry, is that the government has to facilitate growth through consolidation, mergers, uh, trading. Trading is another way to really open trapped spectrum, uh, which might be sitting with inefficient uh, users or with firms which are not making the best use of it. So allow firms to exit markets easily through consolidation mergers. The other thing that inhibits the growth of uh, the sector in India is the way spectrum is allocated. Now, lately, after the scandal in the, you know, in the 2G case that we had, there is almost widespread agreement amongst economists, researchers, and policymakers that market mechanisms really are a better way to allocate spectrum, which is a scale administratively determined, which means you know, by the government. Now, if there is agreement that auctions are really the, the better way to allocate it, what is an optimum allocation? Uh, what should be the optimum uh, auction design? And for that, uh, you know, one really needs uh, scientific know-how. One has to have access to resources in terms of you know, scientific um, knowledge, capacity to, to design and set reservation prices, which really reflect the, the, the value of spectrum. Now, given that there is uncertainty about what, what is the value of spectrum, uh, primarily because you know, markets are evolving, the technology is evolving, so getting this value right or the price right is, really has to be an uh, iterative process. It's really a process of market discovery. And auctions really are a process through which this market discovery can happen in the most efficient way in any uh, market. Now, the one concern we are seeing in the Indian uh, spectrum policy is that there seems to be an overwhelming reliance uh, on the short-run objective of maximizing uh, government revenues uh, by the sale of spectrum. And it is coming at the expense of long-run growth uh, of the sector, which eventually will get passed down, not you know, just to the business, but also eventually to the consumers. So uh, keeping right prices means that you have to uh, assess what the value of this is and what is the growth potential or the, or the revenue potential from spectrum when it is sold to uh, operators. Now, raising prices is not necessarily going to mean that the revenue of the, uh, of the government will be increased because what it does is there, is there is adverse selection that is happening in the market, meaning it distorts the market by, uh, by pushing out more credible players because the value is set too high and this is also likely to lead to more collusion. So high prices are not necessarily a good thing in, in, in these kind of situations. At the same time, you also want to be uh, you know, careful and not set prices that are too low, as we saw in the case of New Zealand, where licenses which are worth $100,000 were given away for a paltry $6. So we have to be careful because that can lead to a serious uh, revenue loss for the government. Now, uh, you know, the, the setting of appropriate uh, spectrum prices 
is really iterative. It has to be a discovery process. But we also have seen over the last years that the regulator in the sector, TRI, uh, is, is competent. And several of its reports that have recommended the prices or the method, the methodology of allocations uh, through or the design of the spectrum have been fairly scientific. And, and uh, we're very, uh, you know, we were very happy to read uh, some of their recommendations. But there seems to be a divide between uh, the recommendations of TRI and what eventually gets uh, implemented or you know, uh, the suggestions that eventually do get uh, implemented by the government. And, and, and I think there is something to be said there for, uh, for uh, efficient policy making um, in this space. But I think at the, at the, you know, at the heart of uh, the spectrum policy in India, we need to highlight that the government's uh, main objective behind uh, these auctions, while it is twofold, it is about maximizing government revenue, but it is also about efficient allocation of a scarce uh, resource, uh, which is spectrum. And uh, appropriate allocation will mean that in the long run, uh, you know, spectrum is free to flow towards the most efficient uh, users, which will lead to uh, a good business in this sector, which eventually means that there is sufficient money for R&D and innovation. And all of these eventually lead to better services, newer products, and higher consumer surplus for citizens at large.